Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video, uh, we are going over our second week matchup in the ABL. This week we are going up against the Boston Grambles, week two. So on the left side of the screen here, we have their team, uh, or their draft, and who they brought their last week, uh, last week who got KOs, kind of the stats on their team after week one. Um, so again, that's uh, the Boston Grambles team on the left. My team on the right, not my full draft. I can show you uh, my full draft up here. Um, and then who I brought on the right. So if you want to take a look at that real quick, you can see the mons I brought pretty much the same as week one. The only substitution I made was this week uh, for week two. I decided to bring Turtonator instead of the Espeon. And I'll talk about why in just a minute. And I didn't really have a good place to put face cam in the layout I have set up right now. So, um... So yeah, we we just got this setup going, but I think this gives a really nice visual of what is um, what's going on, and um, I can kind of point with my mouse and stuff. So enough rambling. Here we go. You can see their team. Obviously, I guess I'll talk about their draft first and who I thought uh, who I was really scared. Honestly, their whole team is really scary. To be honest, there's not a bad mon on their team. I guess the Pokemon I was least scared of was probably Hitmonchan, and they didn't bring that week one, but again, Cinderace, Dragapult, you see up there have incredibly high speed stats, 119, 142, Dragapult being one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. So they have two really fast and powerful hard-hitting Mons. Dragapult can hit physically and specially. Uh, Cinderace is really just a really fast physical attacker. Dub Wool, not very fast, but I've been swept by Dub Wools going for uh, boosting their defense, and then they can also get this move Body Press, which does damage based off defense stat instead of... Um, uh, the attack stat, and they get some really good defense boosting moves. So double wool is scary. So start. I mean, really, again, all of their Pokemon: Hippowdon, Bronzong, Lapras is the G Gigantamax Pokemon that they can bring right there. Uh, is, is their Gigantamax Dynamax Captain? You can see it got a kill. Uh, I was brought and got got a knockout in the first uh, first week. Their Bronzong got two knockouts. Um, so. Definitely, definitely uh, some big threats on their team. Uh, and then they have really good support mons. Shinotic uh, and Pukumuku and Togedemaru are all really, really good support mons. Togedemaru gets the Lightning Rod ability, which uh, basically means if Togedemaru and Lapras are out at the same time next to each other, you're not being able to hit that Lapras with an Electric-type attack um, is huge. Oh, uh, I lied. I, I said I only swapped out... Um, SBI also replaced Galvantula, so I brought Scrafty, um, brought Scrafty and Turtonator instead of uh, Diggersby and, uh, in, sorry, Scrafty and uh, Turtonator instead of Espeon and Galvantula. So again, yeah, some really big threats. So starting off with how I decided to run Corviknight, the only thing I changed from week one is I decided to bring body press instead of roost because i didn't really get an opportunity to heal anyway in the first matchup and i decided i wanted to have a uh, fighting type coverage specifically yeah specifically to deal with mainly lapras and maybe dub wool a little a little bit if they decided to bring it because obviously excuse me uh obviously they didn't bring it week one but Dub Wool scared me, so I, I wanted to be prepared for Dub Wool. So I decided to run uh, with Body Press, uh, you know, a, a defensive, a defensive bulky set. So we give max defense, max, max HP with the Mago Berry. It just means that and they don't have a ton of special attackers um, besides Lapras, really, and Dragapult. Um, so I, and I knew I, I I was confident that I could actually beat Dragapult with uh, Dynamax Corviknight uh, using like Max Airstream. I could take like a Choice Specs Fire Blast. Like I, I ran some calculations and and I, and I was feeling confident that the Dragapult wasn't a huge threat. So I didn't need the investment in attack for really anything on their team. And honestly, having the defense means again body press is that move that uses defense instead of attack. So. Pretty much the, basically the same set. I like to be able to set up Tailwind for speed control, and then when I Dynamax, uh, uh, can boost my attack with Max Fighting, Max Steel Spike boosts my defense, and Max Airstream also boosts my speed. So overall, that's what I brought for Corviknight mainly to deal. I wanted to be able to beat, beat the Lapras if I was at a one-on-one -on -one against it. Um, and then Grimmsnarl, 
similarly as last time I wanted the light clay so that my light screen lasts eight turns um, spirit break I, I, I switched up its moves because I wanted it to be able to hit fairy types uh, I, I brought it max attack adamant because even spirit break is only 75 base power it adamant um, adamant max attack spirit break uh, was a one hit KO against Dragapult so I thought maybe if they thought for some reason wanted to keep a Dragapult out on the field against a Dark and Fairy type for some silly reason, um, I decided I wanted to be able to one hit KO it if it made that if they made that mistake. Thunder Wave just to be able to, they don't have a super fast team, but I really again you know if they decided to leave Dragapult or Cinderace out, you know Cinderace uh, you know isn't super threatened by Grimmsnarl. So I wanted to be able to Thunder Wave the, the really fast mods. Because I had nothing, no matter what I did, I was not going to be able to outspeed Dragapult or really Cinderace with my team's speed. I think the fastest mod I have is Espeon at 110, and I, and I wasn't even bringing it. Because I knew speed was not going to be something in, for my advantage if they bring Cinderace and Dragapult. Um, and then Taunt, specifically Taunt to deal with. They have a lot of support setup mods, like mods like Dub Wool that really like to go for defense boosts if, if he brought that. Uh, Bronzong specifically, because I, I really was confident they are going to bring Bronzong uh, because it was brought the first week and got two kills. So I figured they're not going to... They would not bring Bronzong, and specifically because how slow the rest of their team is, their team really benefits from Trick Room. Um, so I wanted to be able to stop that Bronzong from setting up anything. So taunting, that was my big thing. Also being able to taunt if they brought Pukumuku or Shinotic. Both Mons, all three of those Mons really enjoy going for setup moves, so I wanted to be able to taunt and uh, uh, stop that from happening. So... That pretty much, and then yeah, again, that's why we ran max attack and then max HP for a little bit of bulk there, but max attack specifically so that I could take out that that dang Dragapult. Cause Dragapult is scary. Like honestly, just the biggest offensive threat on their team is Dragapult. Uh, it's one of the best mons in the game. Um, this week we brought Scrafty. Scrafty because I realized I'm not going to be able, again, I realized with Togedemaru running around, I was not going to be able to use electric type attacks uh, consistently and safely against Lapras. So I was like, all right, I need my really bulky uh, fighting type mod. I mean, just you can see the stats, 115 in defense and special defense. Scrafty is going to take a hit. And again, so then that allows me to invest fully in attack, a little bit, mostly in HP. And I specifically ran that much speed because I knew Lapras with no speed investment, uh, Scrafty outspeeds with with 81 uh, speed points. So I brought enough speed to outspeed Lapras and hit it with a close combat was my plan. I actually don't have Drain Punch uh, on the set. That's a mistake. It's Brick Break. And Brick Break destroys Light Screen and Reflect and Aurora Veil. And Lapras, uh, in its gi Gigantamax form, can set up uh, Aurora Veil in one move, which is it doesn't need Hail Up to do it. Makes it a very unique Pokemon. So <clears throat> that's where Brick Break came in, and in close combat, just do a bunch of damage. Again, the speed to outspeed that Lapras, and Life Orb to add some extra oomph. Fake Out, just be able, being able to stop them from going for an attack on the first turn. Fake Out is a really good move that Scrafty likes to run. And then Crunch, Stab Dark-type move to, again, hit Dragapult and Bronzong. Dragapult and Bronzong, and then, again, close combat, all the fighting-type moves. Also, I was worried about the Toga Tomaru, um... And Dub Wool. So again, there's, th you know, Scrafty was a good bring, you know, because I, it covers three mons that I was definitely worried about. And then our trusty boy, Arctivish. My boy, the fish here. Uh, I, I, I didn't, again, I wasn't confident that I was going to be able to outspeed things. Um, I was confident that I could outspeed things without Choice Scarf, and Choice Scarf really didn't allow me to outspeed anything that I would want to. Uh, hit with a vicious rend. So I figured, okay, if we're not gonna, we'll still be jolly to get as much speed as possible, uh, but we'll bring Life Orb for that extra damage. Uh, again, basically the same move set. Vicious rend is its best move, it's most powerful if it goes first. Crunch, again, 
Crunch hits Bronzong. Dragapult, uh, Psychic Fangs. Really, Psychic Fangs doesn't really hit much super effective besides Hitmonchan, which I wasn't really worried about, but mainly it was another way that I could destroy the, or break the screens, break the Aurora Veil. I wanted as many possible ways to break Aurora Veil as possible. And then Icicle Crash, because that thing, uh, Icicle Crash, really hurts Dragapult. So... That was a pretty straightforward set. And then bringing the Turtonator, again, one of the new mons that I didn't bring week one. Uh, I really like Turtonator. I, I thought it would be good to have a Dragon type and Fire type. Um, you know, with Light Screen up, I knew I could live an attack from Dragapult. With, if I got Light Screen up with Grimmsnarl, I knew that I could live an attack from it. Even, I think, even Choice Specs. Choice Specs, Dr Draco Meteor, maybe? maybe? Something crazy like that. It, it, it could live an attack from um, Dragapult and return its own Draco Meteor, uh, you know, with max special attack modest and, and do a lot of damage. Um, and this is actually, I, I got, I, I put Protect instead of Stone Edge. So Protect just to be able to, you know, maybe get around getting hit, because there was also a lot of stuff that they have that hits uh, Turtonator super effective. Hippowdon with the ground type attacks, Dragapult. Um, uh, so yeah, there was some there was some mons I was scared of, but I wanted the fire type coverage for Bronzong, Togedemaru, uh, Shinotic, uh, and I and I wanted to be able to just hit really hard with Dragon type attacks. And once if you can get a Shell Smash off with Turtonator, you know it, it doubles its speed and special attack. Uh, so it, it got it. That's kind of why I brought it was. I just like I like Shell Smash. It's you know one turn and you're plus two speed and um, plus two special attack, and then you start launching Draco Meteors and Heat Waves. Heat Waves, you know, to hit, you know, both Mons for damage, just get some chip damage and stuff. So pretty straightforward set, nothing too fancy there. And then we brought Diggersby again, but instead of Life Orb Swords Dance, I decided to run Choice Band just so I could get the immediate power without losing HP. I didn't really, I don't know, I just wanted to mix it up. I wanted to get a fourth attack in there anyway so i figured if i'm going to be running all four just attacks then then there was no need to uh have life or and i think i calculated the damage and i wanted the damage from choice band rather than life orb um and i brought brick break as well just better fighting type move to have for breaking the i wanted i have three mons that specifically can break the aurora veil for lapras and that was intentional i did not want that uh that thing getting and taking advantage of the uh, Aurora Veil that it can set up for itself. You know, Rock Slide hit Cinderace and Lapras for some damage. Uh, Earthquake hits, uh, again, Cinderace, Skunk Tank, Togedemaru, really strong. Uh, and I brought Ice Punch as the coverage move to do a ton of damage to Hippowdon and Dragapult. Uh, but I think it, it does, it Oko's Dragapult and almost... De definitely two hit KOs, Hippowdon. Definitely doesn't one hit KO because Hippowdon is normally a defensive mon. Anyway, but yeah, so that's kind of my thought process. Um, and, and I figured their team would be pretty similar. Um, you know, Dragapult, Hippowdon, Bronzong, uh, Lapras, Skunk Take. And then again, I, I didn't think they'd bring Shinotic uh, against my Corviknight because double coverage, Steel and Flying just destroys Shinotic. There's not really anything it's good against that much on my team. Um, so Toga tomorrow, I figure is the one mon they're going to switch out and bring, and, and I have plenty, you know, I have three things that do, I, between Scrafty, Turtonator, Diggersby, I have plenty of things to cover that. So I feel, I feel pretty good about the, the team that I'm bringing to this match and it just is all going to come down to how both of us play and how we built our Pokemon and, and who, who prepares the best and who executes best. And, um. That's always how it goes. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this video is going up today, which is Friday the 17th. The battle should be posted either on Saturday the 18th or Sunday the 19th. So keep an eye out for the battle again against the Boston Grand Bulls. Uh, their link to their channel will be down in the description below. Make sure to check them out. Also the links to all of the other coaches and the ABL YouTube channel. Uh, the discord channel all of that information that you guys want to have is going to be down in the description below So make sure you check that out subscribe to my channel if you guys are new here um, Thanks for watching this video. Let me know uh, Let me know You know who on the opponent's team you think is going to be the the toughest uh, Toughest Pokemon for me to take down uh, again my, my, my thought mainly is is uh, 
is that Dragapult. Dragapult is just really scary. It's fast, and it just can output a ton of damage. So let me know your thoughts down below, and I hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.